Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Remember to vote. I don't care who you vote for, but register to vote. And uh, as always, wash your hands. Thank you for watching Cut the Tape. Uh, email us at cutthetape at tftalk.net. Paul will kill me if I don't constantly tell you about that. I've gotten one email so far, and it was actually pretty good. I learned about a new variation. Well, so uh, so here we have it. This was uh, the studio series Sentinel Prime from Dark of the Moon. Overall, it's pretty good, uh, other than the size, as we said earlier. So it's got a lot of good details. I'm pretty happy with it. So looks like it stands up pretty good by itself. Included, we uh, appear to have, you know, a little uh, copyright and, of course, instructions. They never put bios on these things. And uh, in the tradition of all Hasbro Takara Tomy instructions, it doesn't help you transform the figure. The background looks like it's from the war of chicago right or the battle of chicago let me know if you actually keep these i i've been recycling them don't throw them out i recycle them because you know i keep one sealed and i open one up so number 61 uh let's take a look it looks like this is supposed to come off all right, and then we have the weapons. Let's see. All right. Oh, I see. Yeah, I wonder how... Because he doesn't have a fist. He doesn't have the opening hands. I bet you the weapon comes apart. That's what it is. All right, and is this a gun? I don't even remember this part being in the film. Is this, uh, is this a blaster? I wonder where this goes. All right. Way more flexible than I thought, or posable, I guess is the better word. Lots of great detail. <clears throat> Remember I got upset when I saw a video of the vehicles on set, and it was uh, the lot attendant. And he said, uh, yeah, there's Optimus Prime, and that's, that's uh, Optimus Prime's dad. I just went, ugh. Oh. So I was working at Hasbro at the time, and the way he got his vehicle mode was, all right, so it was it was the weekend Revenge of the Fallen opened. And everyone went to California to go to the premiere, except me. I went down to uh, Washington, D.C., to the Smithsonian Institute, to uh, the set where they had filmed um, at the Air and Space Museum, where they filmed Jetfire. And there was a Transformers display there, and I actually got to donate my Transformers to that display. And my, my Transformers are in the Smithsonian permanently, and they're accredited to me. And I always thought, a long, long time ago, years and years ago, man, I'd love to have my collection in the Smithsonian. I actually have Transformers in the Smithsonian. I have my Optimus Prime and my Jetfire in the Smithsonian. My G1 Optimus and Jetfire in the Smithsonian. 
but it was pretty cool. We had, they had a bunch of props there, and I got to play with the uh, with the uh, uh, wheelie car from the film, and I got to run around the museum at night because uh, we had a. I think the museum closed at six, and then we had to wait till seven to actually go into the museum to set up. So we didn't leave until like two in the morning. So I got to run around the National Air and Space Museum at night. It was like a uh, night at the museum. And they had the Enterprise there at the time and I got to get, I got right up to the Enterprise and I got to take a picture right with the Enterprise. Uh, that was pretty amazing. So coming home from that trip, I was flying out of Dulles and I see these airport fire trucks and they were all like gray or black, but it was this, it was this vehicle. And I just kept thinking, oh my God, I've never seen that truck before. I need to take a picture of that. I don't know what we're going to use it for, but that's a real truck. I need to take a picture of it. We sent the pictures from my digital camera because I didn't have one of them cool cell phones at the time. You know, one of the smart iPhones. I took the picture from my digital camera and when it came time, I think it was like two weeks later after Revenge of the Fallen came out, we started working on Dark of the Moon. On the concept board for Sentinel Prime were my actual pictures that I took while going from one terminal to the other terminal at Dulles of the airport fire truck. And that's how Sentinel Prime got his vehicle mode. I just wish he was a little bit bigger. I wish he was a little heavier. First impressions. All right, let's see. There we are. And uh, looks like it's Chicago. Is there anything on the back? No, these these don't connect. I I kind of think these are a little waste of a mo of money. These uh, backgrounds, unlike the arc which you get with uh, the new Netflix series figures, and that's pretty cool. But these these don't connect, and I just kind of think it's a little bit of a waste of money. This is the one I chose to open because the box was damaged when I found it. So there we go. Instructions in there. So, no bio, big screen inspired. Scale, scale detail backdrop. Scale detail backdrop. S big screen inspired, no comma, scale comma, detail comma, backdrop. Think about what those words mean and the context in which they're written on this package. It's a little weird. It's, it's, it's a little weird. Big sp screen inspired, no comma, scale. So big screen inspired scale, yet if you look at the other figures, he's not really in scale. Another story from Dark of the Moon. Here, here's a, I, I think I've told this story before. It's about uh, mud flapping skids. So uh, they were in the film. They, they, the vehicles were shot, but then they were digitally removed by the production. We had no idea they weren't going to be in the film until we went to the premiere in New York City and actually saw the film. That's why we made all those versions of Skids and Mudflap with the black cars, with the uh, green stripes and the uh, like that reddish, brownish stripe on them, because that's the concept art. That was they were always in the film, and the way, and I think they're still in the novelization of the film. And the way they die, they had a really good death scene. They died with Ironhide. So, I 
think Sentinel Prime ends up stepping on Skids, and then I forget. Oh, and then I think he, he cuts off Mudflap's head. I think he steps on Skids' head and he cuts off Mudflap's head, and then he shoots Ironhide with the Cosmic Rust Gun. And it, and it was a Cosmic Rust Gun. I don't know if I can't remember if it's ever mentioned in the film, but. Uh, Michael Bay came to Hasbro and we were explaining Cosmic Rust and what it was and I had to put together like a real quick pitch of like, oh, Cosmic Rust. I need to write a quick paragraph on this, put it on board and give it to him all within like the matter of a few minutes. Thank God for the internet. Here we are, number uh, 61 Studio Series, Sentinel Prime. Remember to always cut away from you rather than towards you. Thanks everyone. Welcome to the show. Uh, I am Rick Alvarez. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Cut the Tape. Let's begin. <laughs> 